When we have purpose aligned with every area of our life, we tend to set goals that we actually are going to obtain because purpose helps to build that confidence. It helps to build that thick skin that you need. It helps to build that perseverance that you need. It helps to build the consistency and tenacity that you need to keep going after the goals that you have set for yourself. Why? Because we're not just putting random statements on a piece of paper saying that this is the goal that I'm going to achieve for this year. We're not putting so much emphasis on particular goals as a, as a way to achieve happiness and freedom that we want to experience in our life. Purpose helps us to do that. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here. I do not take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. But before I jump in, I want to remind you to Please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. As you know, I set a lofty goal to touch 1 million hearts within the next few years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the community button that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Family, we made it. We live to see another year. The pandemic, social injustice, the economic financial struggles that we've had, the shortest of toilet paper that we <laughs> experienced last year could not stop us from walking into this new year. I am so excited for us because... Every new day that we're blessed to just breathe, we receive new mercies. And it's a new opportunity for us to do something that feels good to our soul. And I hope and pray that you're walking into 21 with high expectations because you deserve, you deserve to live the life that's based on your own terms, you guys. And as I sit here and drink my tea, if you are watching the podcast episode, pause right here and go get you some tea so we can drink our tea together. But as I drink my tea, I'm sitting here in awe. I'm in awe, guys, because actually in two days, Live Not True podcast will turn one year old. And this episode that you're listening to right now makes, you know, technically episode 54. But with all the bonus episodes that we do here on the podcast, this makes number 99, 99 total episodes, which is like crazy to me. <laughs> that is so crazy to me. <laughs> you know, so many podcasts are started, but then they, you know, fade away after just a few episodes and literally... Within four months, I was able to launch my podcast after attending FinCon, okay? Now, for those of you who don't know about FinCon, FinCon is a financial conference. You know, it's not podcast movement. Podcast movement is a conference that's all about podcasting, but FinCon is a financial conference. So it's literally a conference where media meets muddy nerds and they come together and collaborate. And so I went to this financial conference with the hopes of breaking into a total, you know, new field when it comes to my coaching business. And so I took what I learned about podcasting because I did um, a seminar on, I attended a seminar on podcasting. 
So I took what I learned about podcasting from a financial conference and was able to successfully launch and have some pretty amazing guests here on the podcast. You know, if I must say so myself, (laughs) pat my own self on the back (laughs) for the accomplishments that I've had, you know, here on the podcast, you know, had conversations with some top podcasters and, you know, Instagram influencers. We've also had, you know, a reality TV star here on the podcast. We had a conversation with a celebrity shoe designer, you know, who has Beyonce wearing her shoes, okay? We even had the former Miss Nevada of the United States here on the podcast and landed a, oh oh my God, I landed a really huge huge opportunity that is going to expand my podcast reach, but I can't talk about it right now because the deal is still in the works. And I know, <laughs> I know you like really Keisha, so why do you bring it up? I, you know, it, I, I kind of hate when <laughs> people say, I, I have this deal, but I can't get the details because it's still in the works. I hate when people say that, but I did not want to discount this huge opportunity that I was afforded for the hard work that I put in to delivering content for you guys twice a week on a weekly basis over this past, over this past year. And oh, don't let me forget to mention that Live Her Truth was featured on an NBC News segment on podcasting. Can I say that again? <laughs> Can I say that again? Liberal Truth was featured on a NBC News segment on podcasting, how podcasting is becoming the new big thing and how, you know, it really doesn't take a lot of fancy equipment um, to start your podcast. All of that happened during the pandemic. You know, the, the, the few wins I just shared with you happened during a pandemic. It is mind blowing. Now that I have the time to really sit here to think and reflect, you're probably wondering how was I able to get so much accomplished in such a short time? Mind you, I'm just talking about, you know, the wins as it relates to my podcast. I haven't even, you know, shared with you the wins as it relates to my business and in my personal life. You guys, when I tell you that What helped me to achieve all of this is no secret. What I did to make all this happen, which is a fraction of what happened last year. And and when I say fraction of what happened last year, I'm also including the setbacks and the lessons learned. Because let me be clear, the road to just achieving the wins that I just shared with you was not easy. Hello, it was a pandemic last year. Let's start there, okay? Okay. So when I say it's just a fraction of what happened last year, I'm also including the setbacks and the lesson learned that I had to grow through as well. But how I was able to, you know, receive these wins is what I've been teaching you here on the podcast all along. This is what I've been teaching you in every single episode that you have listened to. And the secret, if that's what you want to to call it, is strategy. I created a strategy to manifest my purpose-driven vision for my life. Whatever you want to have, whatever you want to do, it takes strategy to get it done. I'm not talking about just sitting down and writing some random goals with deadlines on a piece of paper or creating a vanity board that you're calling a vision board. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about creating a strategy that aligns you with purpose. So you can experience true fulfillment in every area of your life. And there's a proven formula for creating that rock solid strategy. And it has worked for me over my lifetime and it's been working for my clients. And I teach you this formula in my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision. So for more information about my Master Life class or my Master Life classes, you can click the link in the show notes, okay? Click the link in the show notes that says Strategize Your Vision. Now, if you are watching this podcast, which you can watch the podcast over on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash living her truth, or on YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Lakeisha Woodard. If you're watching this podcast, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com. If you want to find out the formula, you have to join me in class when it's open because I only open class a certain number of times throughout the year. But I will tell you this, in order for the strategy that I teach you to work, you have to include 
purpose. I'm going to tell you again, okay? In order for strategy to work, you have to include purpose. In order for any goal, any action plan, or any vision board that you create, purpose must be a part of the equation. And since we are family, over the next 12 weeks, we're going to have conversations about embracing your purpose and how your mental wellness, safety and security, you know, personal development and professional growth, spirituality and faith, and support team building plays a part in your decision to operate in purpose. I want to start the year with talking about purpose and what it really means. Because I know in the, you know, in the social media streets, the definition has been watered down. The definition for purpose have been, has been watered down because it's used interchangeably with other words like gifts and talents, you know? And I think most of you are not quite sure what your purpose is, or you think it's something that you have to find. You think you have to find your purpose. But I believe the answer to our struggle, to our lack, to, you know, our deficiencies, any deficiencies that we have in any area of our life, you know, the answer is purpose. It's purpose. And this is the belief that drives my business and how I help my clients, you know, purpose is also how I live my life so I can truly experience fulfillment and true joy. So a few months ago, I started searching the Bible to find an official definition for purpose, if you will. Purpose is a divine design for our life, okay? And I think that the way some people use the word is, you know, out of context of its original definition or what it, you know, means in biblical terms. Now, today, my research is still going on, so I haven't, you know, found what I'm looking for in the Bible yet. And that's not to say that it's not there. I'm just letting you know that my study and research of it is still ongoing, okay? So I definitely keep you posted on that. However, in the meantime, between time, my Sean Evans Daniels has the perfect definition for purpose. And I absolutely love Marshawn and her book, which is called Believe Bigger. And over the podcast, I believe I have talked about the book Believe Bigger um, throughout the podcast. But if you are unfamiliar with the book, click the audible recommendations that's in the show notes because I'll make sure that the book is listed there because you can get the audio version or you can get the hardback uh, cover of the book because there is an audible uh, audio version and she, Marshawn Evans Daniels, is the person that actually narrated the book. So um, click the link in the show notes for audible recommendations to check out the book. But I bring up Marshawn because Marshawn gives what I think is a perfect definition for purpose, okay? And I think that this definition that she gives really aligns with my beliefs. It really aligns with what has happened over my life and my understanding of how purpose has helped me to live a fulfilled life and experience true joy. And this also, you know, helps um, my beliefs and what my clients have experienced by really truly embracing and identifying and operating purpose, how that has helped their life, you know, and not just their life, but their careers and the relationships that they have built, both, you know, platonic and romantic relationships. So I want to share my Sean's definition of purpose with you. This is how she defines purpose. Purpose is the natural impact and presence that your life is meant to have on others. I'm going to say that again. Purpose is the natural impact and presence that your life is meant to have on others. Now, just based on that definition that Marshawn has given us right there, hopefully that has given you some clarity. Hopefully that has lifted some weight up off your shoulders. And the reason why I say that is because especially right now, it's really pop popular to become an entrepreneur and to start a business, right? And I'm not knocking it because I'm an entrepreneur and I have a business. I'm not knocking it. However, I think that a lot of people who go into business and go into entrepreneurship think that the business that they are building is their purpose. 
and it is, and it is not. And this is something that I was teaching, you know, my my clients before even reading Marshawn's book. So when I read this definition of what purpose is, I was like, hot dog, that's exactly what it is that I that I needed, right? This confirms my ideals about purpose, just based off of the different studying that I have, spiritual studying that I have done over the years, building my relationship with God and what I have experienced. And the reason why I love Marshawn's definition is because everything that Marshawn does is rooted in her faith. We have the same faith. Okay. We believe in a, in a higher power. We believe in God. Okay. And so her definition is in alignment because our beliefs are in alignment. And you guys, that is very important. It's very important to align yourself with people who are in alignment with your purpose and in who are in alignment with what it is that you believe It's when we associate ourselves with people who are going in different directions and don't have the same beliefs that we do that unnecessary friction unnecessary stress and unnecessary overwhelm tends to happen or is exacerbated right because naturally we're probably always anxious and stressful and overwhelmed right and and frustrated but when we align ourselves with people who are not even on the same wavelength as us those things are exacerbated so when i heard this definition i was like yes this is what it means so this is why i say that purpose needs to align with every area of your life because you never have to sell a product you never have to prefer, provide a service in order to operate in purpose. And I think the people who, who, who contribute their purpose to be in the business that they built, it creates more anxiety, especially if that business fails, especially if you know they don't reach the goals that they have put on the business, especially if that business doesn't necessarily bring them happiness and joy and fulfillment, right? Purpose is the impact, is the natural impact and presence that your life is meant to have on others. The business that you build is the vehicle that you use to operate in purpose. The business that you're building is what it is that you're using to make that impact on the people that you need to impact. It's the vehicle that you need to use. This is why I say that Purpose needs to show up in how you talk to your spouse. It needs to show up in the relationship that you have with your kids. Purpose needs to be included in how you spend your money. Purpose needs to be included in the career that you decide to pursue. Like purpose needs to be able to really grow and and expand in the home environment you know, where you live, like you need to feel safe in your environment. Peace needs to happen in your home. So when you leave that house, you can operate in purpose with a clear mind and clear intentions. It's important for us to align purpose with every area of our life, because when we do this, we don't have to worry about being a public success and a private failure all at the same time. When we have purpose aligned with every area of our life, we tend to set goals that we actually are, you know, going to obtain because purpose helps to build that confidence. It helps to build that thick skin that you need. It helps to build that perseverance that you need. It helps to build the consistency and tenacity that you need to keep going after the goals that you have set for yourself. Why? Because we're not just putting random statements on a piece of paper saying that this is the goal that I'm going to achieve for this year. We're not putting so much emphasis on particular goals as a, as a way to achieve, you know, happiness and freedom that we want to experience in our life. Purpose helps us to do that. And in order to really understand, embrace, and identify your purpose, it takes self-awareness. And this is something that I break down and go into complete detail in my Master Life class, Strategize Your Vision. This is something that I break down and go into great detail on a one-on-one personal basis with my clients in my three-month self-awareness coaching program. 
this is what I work on. And you guys, this is not something that I just tell my clients because it sounds good. I actually practice what I teach. Self-awareness and embracing my purpose is the reason why I'm here doing what it is that I'm doing right now today. It's the reason why I even have a business. I was operating a purpose before I created my business. I was operating a purpose before I started this podcast. You guys, I was operating a purpose and making an impact on women and children in particular years ago when I was 18 years old, fresh out of my sexual abuse environment. I was operating a purpose the day I stepped on the, the college campus at Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. I was operating a purpose then because I was taking the steps that was necessary that I needed to take in order to make the impact on my siblings at the time by practicing my, my ability to be focused by putting myself in a structured environment because, you know, what I didn't know at the time, which I know now by being in a structured environment, I thrive. And the impact that I had on others is that when people saw me and then they heard about the fact that I was sexually abused by my mother's husband and I grew up in the ghetto right outside of Chicago and all of a sudden I'm here in college, like that impacted people because they looked at me like, if you can do it, surely I can do it because our situations are completely different. I don't see you walking around here moping. I don't see you walking around here making excuses for not having and for lack. You doing what the best that you can with what it is that you got. I was impacting people. I was operating in purpose. I didn't need a business to do that. Me sharing my stories with, you know, elementary school kids, high school kids, sharing my story of how I survived sexual abuse, I was making an impact on them. Every time I stepped foot on the stage to tell my story of how I survived sexual abuse and was able to turn that pain into purpose, I am impacting the women that are in that audience who have, who were sexually abused as a child and never received help for, for it. It's the impact. I don't have to step on a stage in order to make that impact. I don't have to record a podcast episode to have that impact. I don't have to pitch my services to any corporations to have that impact. I have that impact in my household because I'm impacting my husband because he sees me operating purpose. He sees me making sure that my purpose is in alignment with every area of my life. And so I impact him and make him want to be a better version of himself. That's impact. I'm operating in purpose by doing what it is that I am supposed to do by being obedient to God and fulfilling the calling that's on my life. So I'm impacting, you know, my sisters and brothers. I'm impacting my cousins that's coming up behind me. Hell, I'm even impacting my mom and my daddy because purpose is the impact that you have on people's life. It's the impact that your life is meant to have on other people. So when you tie purpose into physical material things and those physical material things let you down, then you, stand tar- then you start to doubt your purpose. You tend to doubt that God has even given you a purpose. And then maybe you start to doubt whether or not you're even worthy to have, you know, a, a, a truly happy life. When you tie purpose to things and material things, those things, you know, you, you, you tend to associate your value with those material things. And you are way more valuable than any Jimmy Choo, any Gucci purse, any Mercedes Benz or Lexus or Tesla, any 3,000, 5,000 square foot mansion. You are way more valuable than, than that because God saw fit to give you a calling, to give you a purpose, to solve a problem, to make an impact on his children in this world. And you have to believe that. You have to believe that in order to truly, truly live your truth. You have to believe that. And this is something that I can help you with through our Master Life classes and through my one-on-one self-awareness coaching program. I know between all of the blessings and attacks that you face on your journey, it's hard not to feel overwhelmed. It's hard not to feel valued. 
it's hard to believe that there's a purpose. It's hard to believe that you are, are meant for a greater good. And yes, you can feel overwhelmed in your season of blessings. Yes, you can have self-doubts in your season of blessings. Yes. Yes, you can challenge whether or not you are worthy in your season of blessing, especially when family and loved ones around you are in a, de- in a different season. But you can create a strategy to make your journey less overwhelming, less stressful, and more fulfilling. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. I'm proof. My clients are proof. And these are the types of conversations that I want to have with you. Yes, we have those conversations here on the podcast, but we're literally scratching the surface, you guys, literally scratching the surface. And I want to go deeper with you so we can unearth what's holding you back, what's holding you back, right? And plant the necessary seeds that you'll need to prepare for your harvest season. There's work that we need to do now. We have to do the work now to prepare for what's to come six months from now, or even at the end of this year, or hell, even next year, we need to prepare now. And despite not knowing when your harvest season will come, you have to start doing the work now. Actually, we're going to have a conversation about gardening (laughs) that explains this in even more, you know, detail, but you have to subscribe so you don't miss the episode. So go to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe, okay? Going deep, is what I know. And going deep is what I know best. It's what I'm not afraid of doing. And going deep is what helped me to truly embrace and then operate in my purpose. Many times I've been told that I'm way too deep (laughs) or the conversations that I have are really, really deep that people don't want to have those conversations or they just don't want to face those conversations. And honestly speaking, for a while, I questioned my deepness. I questioned whether or not going deep was necessary. I questioned my deepness. If that's even a thing, (laughs) my deepness, is that even a thing? (laughs) If it's not, it's a thing now. (laughs) I questioned my deepness. But then I had to reflect on the people that I've helped over the years. And the thing that drew them to me that caused me to have that natural impact on them. It was the fact that I was willing to share how I was able to literally turn my pain into purpose. And in order to share how I was able to do that, I had to go deep. I had to go deep. Just only stay on the surface level, did a disservice to anybody that I came in contact with. I had to go deep. So with that, you know, so with that being said, if deep conversations are not for you, that's cool. That's cool. But really take a moment to inventory what being shallow has really done for you lately. (laughs) What has being shallow and only doing surface level stuff, how's that helped you out thus far? (laughs) You guys, we live the majority of our lives on the surface while our core is going unattended and unnurtured. Our core being goes unattended and unnurtured when we only just live on the surface level. What we're failing to realize is that what we're not nurturing, which is our our core, is dictating our surface life. When our core is in turmoil, that turmoil comes to the surface. We have to take care of our core. And in order to get to the core, you have to go deep. And not just the the core of in you, but the the core of the earth. You got to dig deep, right? Get to the core of anything requires going deep. And if you want to change what's on the surface, you have to go deep to fix the core. Period, guys. There's no way around it. If you want to fix what people see at the surface of you, if you want to fix what people see on the outside, you have to fix your core. And to get to the core, it requires you to go deep. And one of the ways to go deep is to have those deep conversations. And since our interaction is pretty limited here on the podcast or in podcast form, I'm creating a safe, judge-free community of like-minded people to come together so we can work on our core together. 
to get back to the root of our personal dreams, our personal values, and our priorities so we can operate fully in purpose. And if you want to be down and you know some good people that will make this community amazing, then I need you to click the community link that's in the show notes. And when you do, I keep you posted on additional details for our special community. Family, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week for a whole year. <laughs> I'm so excited about that. If you need support, you know, digging deep to change the core of who you are so you can live a purpose in life, then head on over to LakeishaWooder.com forward slash coaching for more information. Also know that all Audible recommendations are linked in the show notes and you can try Audible for free. So definitely take advantage of that. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Also, don't forget to click the community button that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and we can work on our core together in a safe, judge-free zone. Family, as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch one million hearts within the next two years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. My heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.